All right, this is where I have left off so far. And I'm just going to double click on the little rotate hand tool at the bottom here in Illustrator to, to reset its orientation. And I have some little details, and they're looking good. I have some nice kind of dimensional line art that looks believable. And then I just have this to clean up because before I save it for today, I want to get it where it's clean because I might forget these little areas when I come back to it that I wanted to clean up. So remember, once it's a vector, no matter how you got it to be a vector, you can always use the pencil tool as magic scissors to redraw some of these edges and these lines, right? And get it to be what you want. And then if you ever want to go backwards, I had this question. You can always hit Command Z, but if you want to see your whole history states, you can go to Window and History, and you can see all of them. And you can go forward and back, you know, as you wish. Right. And then, of course, Command S to save, but how are we saving it? Well, I'm still working on it, so I'm saving it as an AI file, my working file type. So I just say save. But let's say I was finished with my line art. And one other thing I want to do before I save it is I want to fix the pencil tool there and I want to fix it and round it out here and round it out here. Just little things. Okay, so if this was my finished line art, what would I do? I would go to layers. And I would turn off, not delete, but turn off the sketch layer. So all I have is just my black line art. Remember, no white shapes. If you need to erase your black lines, you use the eraser. You don't paint with white. And once I've done that, I'm going to save it not just as an AI file, my working format, but I'm going to export it as something that can move into Photoshop. So I'm going to, this is if I was finished. In fact, no, never mind. I could erase all of these paths and just have the head and then just go on with that. But I want to finish this one up. So I'm going to say save a copy. And then the format I'm going to use can be either SVG or EPS. Those are both transferable vector formats. The one that works be best Adobe program to Adobe program is EPS. So I'm going to save them as both once I'm all finished. But I'm just going to save the EPS right now. That EPS saved to the desktop. You'll always notice EPS is on this operating system because it won't give you a preview of it. So you need to know what it is. It is a vector file. And it is made to open in Illustrator. So do not try to open it in Photoshop. Because if you do, it will force you to rasterize it. And you don't want to rasterize it, so say cancel. Instead, you're going to open a Photoshop file. So a new file in Photoshop. And instead of it being 8x10x350, we are going to color this to be large enough for a poster. So we are doubling that. Not 8x10, but 16x20. Right, another art standard at a resolution of 350. So this is plenty big. And as long as it did it in inches rather than pixels, which it looks like it did pixels for me. <laughs> so I'm going to change it 16 by 20 in inches. Even without anything on it, this is already taking up a lot of memory. Right? But it's 16 by 20 by 350 pixels per inch. Now I simply drag and drop my finished line art EPS onto it. So I find that from the desktop. Here it is. Drag and drop it, just like your logo. Comes in as a smart object. Size it so it looks good. I don't have to hold down shift because this is Photoshop. And now I'm ready to color it. This is my vector smart object line art. I lock that. I lock the background, which is white. And then on top of that, I do what's called flat color. So the flat color is like a piece of cheese in between two pieces of bread. And how do I do flat color? Well, I can just use my paintbrush, pick a color, and start painting. 
but that's not the best way. But you see when I do that, it will go behind my line art. Okay. So we'll talk about the best way, but the best way is to use your locked line art with your magic wand with contiguous turned on to select empty shapes. I'll just select a bunch of them, for instance. And then you move that selection, remember, because selections can move, to your flat color layer, and then you fill that with the paint bucket. Boom. And so what you're going to do when you start flat coloring is have a separate layer for your flat color and for your line art and for your white background. And this is what I call the digital coloring sandwich, right? You have white bread on the bottom, black bread on the top, all of your coloring layers in between. So how would you post your black line art to Canvas? If you're done with it, you just save it with all your color layers turned off as a JPEG. And I'm not going to do that because I'm not finished yet. But what I will do is take a screen grab of this because we're at class time now. And then post this to Canvas because this is what we're looking working on. Black vector line art. All right. That's it for today. It would be great if you could finish your line art before next class because next class will be about coloring. But I didn't finish it. So I'll be reviewing line art at the beginning of next class and then going into coloring.